Okay, we're looking at part two here. It's just been an hour later, but I found some things that uh, I thought were pretty interesting. I've taken some photos. I got the big gun out. I got the big camera out, and I took some great photos of this little knife that we're going to be repairing. And we're going to show you here in just the next few minutes what we found. Now, a couple of these photos... I haven't actually went and deleted any of the garbage ones, okay? So we're going to be skipping a few photos because they're not focused in the location we want it to be locate, uh, focused in and those sorts of things. So we're going to be kind of skipping around. So just bear with me. But we got some findings and we got some head scratchers remaining, okay? So here we go. Part two. Examination of the pins of the knife, Okay. And I just installed this piece of software, so it's Fast Stone, so it's it's going to be bugging me about stuff, okay? Thank you, Fast Stone. Okay, so now, one thing with macro photography, let me tell you this up front. You can clean an object, which this knife has not been cleaned. It's just been pulled straight out of my drawer, and prior to that, it was used, okay? But if I had cleaned it, you can clean an object to be what you think will be perfectly spick and span clean. And macro photography will show it to be still dirty. So, when you see this knife, it's going to appear to be incredibly filthy in these photographs. Ignore that. Okay? Trust me. This is a pretty clean knife, as is, straight out of the drawer after having been used. It's fairly new, okay? But the blades are still sharp and everything. Okay, here we go. You're looking now at the pin that held on the broken piece of handle, okay? And you can see how it's been pounded out there. Now, I don't know what technology Case used to tap this out, but it's pretty nice because it's well, well rounded, okay? And that doesn't appear to be something that was done with a necessarily a ball-peen hammer, okay? Interestingly enough, so obviously they got some sort of machine that does it very nicely for them, okay? So, nice detail. And if you look at this um, pin here that goes through the um, knife itself and holds on the uh, blades and whatnot, and the springs, same same thing. It wasn't done with the ball peen hammer, that's for sure. Or I don't think it was. Let's just put it this way. If it was done with the ball peen hammer, that guy or that lady who did it is really good because they didn't leave any marks. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Okay. Now, over to the two o'clock position, you can see a mark. That might have been something that I did when I, say, dropped the knife, okay? But otherwise, there doesn't seem to be any marks from a hammer, okay? And let me go over to the other one, zoom in real quick. Now, that one seems to be a bit more deformed. That might have taken a brunt of a hit or something along those lines, okay? Now. Move on to the next photo. Photo at an angle. And you can see that hole right there is not reamed out on that side. There wouldn't be no reason to ream that hole out on that side, okay? Of of the um, of the brass plate that the pin's going through. Now the interior is a whole different matter. That's where we get into the hmm, not sure quite what was going on, what is going on there. You'll see. Next photo, that one's just one I took kind of out of focus, out of focus again. Here's the one that's better focused on the hole through the knife itself. Okay, now, here is the pin pushed into the knife. And as you can see, it truly looks like the hole going through the brass there, the brass pin is going through a hole that has been reamed out. It truly looks like it's been reamed out. Now the focus on this 
photograph could have been a little bit better, but I detect some reaming there, okay? And obviously on the back side there, that's been machined to some degree to fit in a reamed hole, okay? So nice to know. So one would assume that that pin sits flush with that brass plate. Now, I got a couple other photographs that kind of show that it, maybe it doesn't, but that's those photographs are not definitive. I think this probably is the best photo, okay? And there's some other factors going on there as well. Let's see. Okay, that's garbage photo. Oh, look. There's some gunk in there from when I previously used it. That's probably a 12-year-old uh, apple peel. Okay, next photo, I took that out. Now, look at this one. Look at that. I'm not certain that's the pen sticking out there. In fact, I think it's probably not. Okay, but it's in the proper location. Let's go on this side. Those two, those two line up with each other. I should have taken a better photo. Uh, what this does, what this photo does show you though, is one thing I had mentioned earlier about the bone. If you can see the bone there of the handle, you can see that it's blue on the outside and white on the interior, which looks like they just took a paintbrush and daubed some blue paint on the bone, which is fine. It's just interesting to know how they made made this knife. Okay. Not complaining, but it looks like this knife, the handles, they didn't spend a whole lot of time with it. Uh, they wanted some white in there and a brush stroke or two and done. Okay, let's move on. Oh, picture of my bark. I think it's beautiful. Over to the left, you can see a little bit of the, um, probably an epoxy mix that they used to to harden, harden this. Looks like um, it pulled up or something like that along those lines over there on the left side. But um, we'll be sanding that all off in due time. So everything will look great. Now, going back to the knife, see how dirty it looks? If you look inside of it, eh, you can see a little of the dirt, but you don't see all that much dirt. The camera picks up everything. Okay, here we go, zoom in, okay? Really doesn't show us anything we had not seen already before, okay? Other than the exterior head on that pin is not made for a reamed hole. Interesting. Very interesting. But the interior of the pin is. Okay. Now I pulled on it with my finger. Once again, it's not really in focus, so let's move on, see if that one's in focus. Not really. Okay, show anything we need to know? Nope. Okay, now this one, there's the pin on the opposite side. Got it centered up right now. Not exactly quite sure what to make of that. Okay, almost looks like half a pin. But let's go take a look at the rest of the photos, okay? And this pen almost seems to be missing or broken in some context. Now this is on the other end of the knife, okay? The far end of the knife from where the where the handle was broken off. This pen almost seems to be in some state of deterioration, or is that is that blue and white handle I'm looking at and that pen has has mysteriously disappeared out of the knife. No, it's still in the knife. Um, got the knife over here on the other side, uh, over here by the computer right now. There's the pen right there. And then there's, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at right there. We'll find out later. We'll be taking this knife apart, okay? Or some of them. We'll be taking the handles off. So we'll, we'll find out what's going on. And 
I don't see the pins sticking out into the cavity there, the interior of the knife. Another photo of the same. Okay, in this particular case, now I pulled on that pin, and it is, it's not flush, and it does not appear that the top one is flush either. Now it's interesting, the top one appears to be much smaller than the bottom one. In this top, you know, could be left or right, depending on how you're looking at it. But in this particular photo, the top of the photo shows a pin that looks to be significant, the head of it, significantly smaller than the, than this one right here. Interesting. Okay, another photo of the same. Okay, now that does appear to be sticking out into the knife some. And another same, that one appears to be sticking out into the knife some. And in this particular case, I pulled it out again with my finger and it is slightly sticking out into the knife, slightly. All this matters because because eventually, eventually, I'm going to build a build a piece that sticks in here, a piece of steel that sticks in here, just the width of this inter interior of the knife, so that when I'm tapping on the exterior of that pin to tap it down and put a head on it, that pin does not move. That's critical, okay? So let's move on to the next photo. I don't know why I got a blank photo there. There's the knife, more than the knife itself. And um, anyway, I think that's pretty much all the photos I took. So interesting findings. Hope you enjoyed step number two, shall we say, of this process. A little bit of investigation. And I'll make a determination on what I do next. I'll probably start removing the handles and I will attempt to film that for you. If I don't film it, I'll take some, take some photographic evidence. I'll get you some evidence of what's going on. And thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on step number three, which will most likely be removing the handles or building or maybe building that interior piece. Stay tuned. We'll see what we got next. Just depends on what I decide to do. Thanks.